Every new day in Wisconsin is a fresh reason to specify Wisconsin cheese. A brand new reason to discover all the ingredients that go into Wisconsin cheese, especially pride. The pride of over 160 years of experience that began when European cheesemakers came to America seeking the ideal place to craft their famous cheeses as well as create unique new cheeses. A place of lush pastures and pure limestone filtered water. A place where the quality of the milk would let them fashion the world's finest cheese. A place they called Wisconsin. We're going to show you how Wisconsin cheeses are made today. From the time milk arrives at a cheese plant until the time you serve or bite into a favorite cheese variety. Because the more you know, the more discerning you can be in selecting cheese. And the more you'll come to value Wisconsin's cheesemaking heritage and quality. Every day, the freshest quality milk is delivered to scores of Wisconsin cheese plants. Some plants are of a large capacity, using the latest technology and most advanced methods. Some plants are of small capacity, using more traditional handcrafted means of production. But large or small, all employ a time-honored combination of craftsmanship and skill. Cheesemaking is still a process that involves two of today's most precious resources, intense labor and lots of time, sometimes years. Cheesemaking isn't something you can rush or streamline. And in Wisconsin, we don't try to. No wonder Wisconsin creates more award-winning cheeses than all other states combined. More awards than any other nation. Today, no other state sets higher quality standards than Wisconsin. Wisconsin was the first state to grade cheese for quality and still requires our cheese graders to be licensed through the Department of Agriculture. Cheese graders evaluate in four areas, flavor, body and texture, color, and finish or appearance. Wisconsin was also the first to license cheese makers. No Wisconsin cheese is made without a licensed cheesemaker in the plant. Now, an even higher level of excellence has been established with the Wisconsin Master Cheesemaker Program, a demanding combination of classes and apprenticeship that only licensed cheesemakers with at least 10 years of experience may take. It is the highest, most rigorous degree of cheese education and training in the nation. We asked Joe Widmer, a Wisconsin master cheesemaker, why Wisconsin cheese and cheesemakers are special. What drives them? Uh, it comes from family. You know, grandfather always set, strived uh, for quality. It was the main thing, no shortcuts. And uh, it also comes from the tradition of Wisconsin. Uh, all the way up, our standards have been the highest. Uh, we have more licensed cheesemakers than any state. Being from Wisconsin, uh, you just want to put out the best product you can. While the art of cheesemaking has advanced, the basic process has stayed much the same and still primarily depends on the skill of the cheesemaker. Just as the quality of ingredients affects the outcome of recipes, high quality milk is essential for cheesemaking. Cheese is the concentrated form of milk and the major components of cheese are milk proteins, primarily casein, milk fat, and water. After milk is received by the cheesemaker, it is weighed and tested for quality, purity, and composition. The fat content is adjusted according to the type of cheese being made, from part skim to whole milk to cream. For example, traditional Swiss cheese is made with partially skimmed milk, but baby Swiss is made with whole milk, which gives it a creamier texture and more buttery flavor. Although yields vary based on the fat and protein content of the milk used, it takes about 10 pounds of milk to make one pound of cheese. Cheese can be made from either pasteurized or raw milk. In pasteurized milk, many pathogens are eliminated by heating the milk to over 160 degrees for about 15 seconds. Cheese made from raw milk must be cured for over 60 days to eliminate pathogens. The favorable bacteria are known to cheesemakers as starter cultures. Specific cultures contribute to the resulting flavor and texture in different cheeses. Examples of starter cultures include Streptococcus and Lactobacillus. The starter culture's primary function is to convert the milk sugar lactose to lactic acid, which acidifies the milk and prepares it for the addition of rennet. 
Under the influence of acid and rennet, the casein begins to coagulate or gel, trapping most of the milk fat along with the proteins and some of the whey. As the gel-like mass begins to solidify, it is cut into curds. This begins the separation of curds from whey. Whey is the excess liquid which is removed in the cheesemaking process. The size of the curds varies depending on the type of cheese being made. Large curds, cooked at low temperatures, retain more whey, have less protein bonding, and yield softer cheeses, such as feta or ricotta. Curds cut smaller and cooked at higher temperatures allow more whey to escape and more protein bonding, which yields harder cheeses, such as asiago or parmesan. The whey is either drained away from the curds, or the curds are dipped or pumped out of the vat into perforated forms. This step leads to a process known as the knitting of the curds. Knitting transforms individual curds into one body of cheese with the characteristics of the type of cheese desired. Knitting also permits lactic acid development and regulates moisture control. With the combined action of the starter cultures still producing lactic acid, the protein filaments merge into larger fibers, and the texture changes from being very elastic to being firm and resilient. Cheddaring is the flipping and turning process used in the manufacture of cheddar cheese. Here, small curds are knit together, then cut into slabs, which are repeatedly turned to drain additional whey and foster proper acidity in cheese body. These slabs are then cut or milled into peanut-sized shapes, salted, and then sold in bags as cheddar curds, or pressed into various forms. Other knitting examples are the preliminary packing of Colby and the pulling or kneading of pasta filata cheeses. In each case, the curd mass is manipulated in different ways to transform the curd into different cheese varieties. Salt plays an important role during the knitting process. It is stirred directly into the curds for some types of cheeses, such as cheddar, rubbed on the surface during curing for Swiss, or dissolved in brine for cheeses like provolone and mozzarella. Salt plays three important roles. It encourages the curd to expel more whey, lowering the moisture content, enhances the flavor, and slows the bacterial activity, which prevents over-ripening. In the final stage of the curd knitting process, curds are transferred to forms or molds and pressed by their own weight or by applied pressure. The curing process plays a key role in the final outcome of many cheeses and differs with the variety of cheese being made. Aging or curing, which is commonly referred to as affinage, takes place in carefully monitored rooms where temperature is tightly controlled. Generally, temperatures range from 35 to 50 degrees. Moisture can range from lower to higher levels at 80 to 95 percent. This is the last step in the cheesemaking recipe, which can take weeks, months, and with some cheeses, years to complete. Provolone, cheddar, and parmesan are examples of cheeses with no visible signs of ripening. They're ripened from the action of the bacteria evenly distributed throughout the cheese. Gruyere, Brick, and Limburger are examples of surface ripened or washed rind cheeses that develop flavor and texture from the action of a harmless mold, bacteria, or yeast that is applied to the surface. During this process, the proteins and fats continue to be broken down into simpler compounds which helps the cheese develop its final texture and flavor. The bloomy rind on brie is a result of Penicillium candidum, a white mold applied to the surface. The mold produces enzymes, which ripen the cheese from the outside in in a matter of weeks. Blue cheeses are mold ripened throughout the interior from the action of mold that develops within characteristic veins and pockets throughout the cheese. There are several ways of categorizing cheese. Type of milk, flavor, ripening method, place of origin, or degree of hardness. 
A category is a family of cheeses that share similar characteristics. Varieties or types represent individual cheeses within the families. Styles refer to their shape and size. The most universal and logical system for classifying cheese is by degree of hardness, and it rests on legal definition. The U.S. federal standards of identity define maximum moisture, minimum milk fat, and in some cases, age. For current cheese standards, go to www.wisdairy.com. Wisconsin cheesemakers produce more than 600 varieties, types, and styles of cheese. Cheeses you find in stores throughout the world and in dining establishments throughout the nation. Wisconsin leads the industry and the nation in the establishment of quality standards in cheesemaking education and training and in the support the state offers cheesemakers. It's a difference you can taste. Reese Lewis is an internationally known chef and general manager of food and beverage at the five-star rated American Club. Here's why he specifies Wisconsin cheese. All the cheeses that we have, we've done side-by-side -side comparisons on a variety of different cheeses within their categories. And we find ourselves coming back to the master cheesemaker products. The reason for that, I would imagine, would be just the quality and the consistency that go into it. The fact that the individual who's making it has done the amount of preparation and study to really know and understand their product and to make it the best that they can in their category. From lush pastures and high quality milk to the finest in the cheesemaker's art, you find it all only in one place in the world, Wisconsin. We hope you've learned more about the wide variety of award-winning cheeses made in Wisconsin, how they're made, and about the craftsmen who make them, how a tradition of care is being passed from one generation to the next. Making fine cheeses is a labor of love. It takes time. The result? Better cheese quality, better cheese performance, for better tasting food, and better, happier customers for all of us. You can sum it all up in one word, Wisconsin.